uh, thought that we defensively executed a lot of things that we wanted to do um, throughout the night. I thought that um, their go-to players uh, stepped up. I thought Aaliyah Boston um, had a terrific game tonight, gave us some problem with her physicality around the rim. But I thought we did a really nice job of disrupting Caitlin, um, turning her over, um, getting the ball out of her hands at times. Um, and so, you know, she had a stat night of a triple-double, which is uh, really impressive. But I thought uh, those seven turnovers and, and some other um, you know, passes that we made very difficult throughout the night, um, I thought we did a lot of really good things. We just uh, were a little short. We missed six layups, I think, in the fourth quarter. Um, had a big three under a minute and a half to go in the game to tie it, to have some momentum. Um, you know, had a, a tough possession after we got a first shot miss after that to maybe have another opportunity to go down and tie it. Uh, but then we fouled and they were in the bonus. Um, and so it became a two possession game there late and uh, just couldn't get over the hump. But super proud of these guys. Odyssey really is, continues to lead us from the point guard position, her 20 points and her um, consistent effort to attack tonight, get her in, in get herself into the paint was big for us. Um, and then our bench was big. Um, we had uh, over 30 points off the bench tonight uh, with Kia and, and Ray really stepping up. Ray had an efficient game tonight and uh, gave us the spark we needed off the bench uh, while they really tried to take away Rakia tonight. Start with questions for players first and Vanity. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Mike Hill, Matthew here with uh, LA Sparks Weekly. Just you know, most people are going to talk about Caitlin Clark and what she's able to do, but the play of Kelsey uh, uh, Mitchell uh, protecting her or being around her, just how tough was it to slow her down tonight as she was able to score 18 points to help uh, Caitlin there? Who wants to take it? I mean, yeah, just, um, you know, slippage and within our execution, uh, you know, going under when we should be going over, you know, switching when we're not. But, you know, she's a tough player, and she's going to make some hard shots as well. So we just try to stay as solid as possible. And uh, DJ from Infinity TV, this question is for Odyssey. That first uh, quarter, Indiana had a bunch of turnovers that we couldn't convert um, into points. Can you talk about, like, how we took care of the ball and how it affected, you know, our offense to get started off um, in that first quarter? Um, I'll say, you know, starting out the game, I think we did pretty well. Our spacing was a little um, contested. We were a little bit on top of each other, but I think we were solid defensively. Um, like I said, it's just a little things. Um, with this group, we just got to buy in and um, will to be better. Everybody um, together as a group, but the biggest thing is staying together. We got another one. Quick turnaround on Friday. Thank you, Rashawn. Hey, Ray, what have you seen lately just in terms of how you've been able to take advantage of the minutes you've gotten? Uh, yeah, no, I just try to come in and be aggressive. Um, you know, I consider myself a slasher and a shooter, so I just try to come in and, you know, get, get to the free throw line or maybe get some kicks going out. But uh, really just seeing what the team needs me to do when I come in. And, um, yeah, my teammate just my teammates also just put me in great positions to finish – uh, threes and at the rim and stuff. So honestly, just coming in and trying to give whatever the team needs. And for Odyssey, at, at this point, you kind of haven't been with the team for a little bit now. Um, what are some of the things that have come rather seamlessly for you? And, and what are some things that maybe you're still working on and just in terms of like incorporating yourself or, or learning? Um, I mean, with any team, when you go to a new team, it takes time to – get to know your teammates, gel with them, especially players you never played with. So um, I feel like I got the hang of it as far as the plays, um, knowing my teammates, knowing where to find them. Um, just get in the paint as much as I can. That opens everything else up for Ray, um, Kia, all of the shooters so they can just knock down standstill three. So um, just trying to stay aggressive on the, on the offensive end and play my heart out on defense, whoever my defensive assignment is, just trying my best to – um, give as much energy as I can because they feed off of me. Um, so just trying to lead this team and um, we'll, we'll win and we'll get it. We just got to keep working. 
Thank you. Asia. Uh, hi, ladies. This is Asia from uh, Daily Swish. Um, my question to you guys was, um, do you feel like uh, tonight's performance, defensive performance, do you think that that was your uh, best defensive performance yet so far? And um, do you think you guys will be able to keep this momentum uh, going into the next game? Um, I mean, we were solid defensively, I'd say for the most part throughout the game. I mean, we had – we were down three. Like Coach said, I mean, um, Kia knocked down that three. At the momentum – we had the momentum and we're, we're in the game. I felt like we were in the game the entire time. Um, when they went on a run, I thought they stole the momentum and kind of kept it. But um, we were solid. We had a little slippage defensively, um, not grabbing the rebounds, just – out battle down there, but um, for the most part, we stayed together. Um, we were right there. Um, it sucks, of course, when we, a team that feel like we we definitely could have beat, um, but we played solid. We lost by seven, but um, we're gonna stay with it. We're gonna stay together. Like I said, we got we got to keep our head up. On to the next. We play again Friday, so we're gonna work on everything that we need to and practice tomorrow. Try to be better against Chicago. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, I don't need this. All right, we'll get started with questions for Kurt first in person. Coach, when you are trying to kind of get back to contention, get back to the playoffs, do you look at all of what the fever has done? And they were in a similar boat as you were at last year, and just how quickly you can kind of get things turned around. Yeah, I, I, with myself being in the league 10 years now, you know, I have. Um, a good perspective and a good lens on how teams have built, um, you know, through the years, in, including my tenure when I first got to Connecticut. Uh, we were no a non-playoff team for the three years before I got there. We had one rebuilding year, and then we started where we had that successful run. Um, and, you know, I've watched teams that have built through the draft, and you watch um, – you know, the aces and what they were like in San Antonio. They moved to Vegas. They continue to have some draft picks, continue to add pieces around those draft picks. You know, you now you see it here with multiple draft picks in a row. Um, and you still had Kelsey Mitchell um, when that all started. And now where um, the fever are. And, uh, you know, they, they were a team that was built through the draft. When I went um, to LA two years ago, the, 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 the focus was kind of putting pieces around NECA, um, one of the true superstars of the league and a longtime spark. When NECA was leaving in free agency, there was a clear direction to build with youth. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, Cameron Brink's been hurt. We've had a lot of people in and out of our lineup. Uh, but Rakia Jackson is a, you know, uh, a rising star in this league. We still have a lot of players in the prime of their career and taking on larger roles than they've ever had. So, um, you know, we understand the process and the build. It's almost like our second first year because of the direction change and now the youth movement. Uh, but super proud of them. You know, we, we you know, we're trying to not let losses that are accumulated bother us in terms of the philosophy of continuing to build, continuing to get better, continuing to do things that put us are in uh, position to win. Tonight is frustrating because I thought we did enough to win this game in a lot of areas, but it was little things, offensive rebounds, uh, their second chance points. It, it was uh, maybe, you know, some spacing issues on plays that we've been running since training camp. And, you know, just little things. And, and with that said, under 90 seconds to go, you have a shot to tie it um, on the road and put yourself in position to win. And one more, and you were one of the few teams that saw this fever team at the beginning of the year and kind of seeing them now. How different is this team between those kind of two or three games? Here? Yeah, I watched both games from May. And both teams are so drastically different and have improved so much. Um you know, it's watching back the both May games um, when, you know, we were preparing for this game. It's it just jumps off the film, you know, that how much both teams have improved, their tempo, their execution, 
their confidence. Um, it, it, it's as I always say, someone that's been in this league now 10 years, May basketball is not always pretty in the WNBA. And by the time you get to September and October basketball, it's really, really a good product. And right now, um, teams are playing like that, including us. We are getting better, and, and certainly the fever have improved. Rashawn. Hey, Coach. Uh, just kind of riding the roller coaster with the young team, right? Like you, you have the – the New York win and, and then you come back against Atlanta and then you come back, you play, you know, really well tonight, um, despite not being able to pick up the win. What areas of growth did you see tonight? Yeah, I, you know, I thought we we tried a different defensive game plan tonight that we hadn't rolled out in recent weeks. Um, and, and we had one day to prep for that. And I thought our execution, our discipline for the most part was on cue. Uh, we didn't always finish to um, a defensive rebound. They, you know, their rebounding hurt us. Um, Aaliyah Boston hurt us inside uh, with her physical presence. But I, I, we did so many things that in a short prep, um, I was really pleased with. Um, and then, you know, offensively, you know, that to have the confidence to step back up and make 10 threes tonight after we just didn't shoot the ball well the other night against Atlanta, um, you know, they were almost daring us to make threes and we had a really off night. So for us to step back up and get, um, shoot nearly 40%, we, we weren't afraid to take threes tonight. We were hunting them, um, and made 10, you know, you know, that that's growth with a young team, you know, that they didn't hang their heads and let another one poor shooting night from the arc really snowball into multiple. Um, they stepped back up and made big threes tonight. Maybe one too little, but we made threes tonight. It, as a group, do you go back and watch this, or do you immediately flip to Chicago? Oh no, we always do some self scouting. We'll always, you know, be in their ear on on growth areas. With a young team, you have to. Um, they have to, you know, they have to dig in with film as part of their growth through this hard cadence of games. But we will prepare like crazy, and you know, go directly to practice tomorrow when we leave. Um, you know, and, and drive up to Chicago um, and try to prepare for that quick turnaround game. But you have to um, at least invest some time with the young team on on growth areas, but also give them confidence in a lot of the things that we did do well tonight. Thank you. Safe travels. Thank you. Vanity. Hey, Coach DJ from Infanity TV. Um, so just piggybacking off everything that you've said here and looking at the stat sheet, very solid game. We're trending upward with this young team. Do you think that in a perfect world with those uncontested, you know, easy makes around the basket, if we had have made those, that this game outcome would have been different? Yeah, you know, and again, we don't we I don't want them to dwell on it because then you get even more anxious around the rim. But we missed makeable baskets around the rim against a team that doesn't have elite shot blocking. Um, and then, you know, we, you know, we missed a couple big open threes down the stretch that, you know, like, again, we'd love to have um, in this kind of game and, and, you know, could the tide been different. So, you know, proud of them, but you know, the little things that we keep preaching about from screening angles to our physicality and box outs to um, understanding, um, you know, there, there's no slippage that we know their sideline out of bounds plays. We know their baseline out of bounds plays. So, you know, when when Kelsey Mitchell scores on a sideline out of bounds play that we have scouted really well, you know, that's disappointing. But, you know, all you can hope with Kelsey, right? She had 18 points on 18 shots. You know, that's, you know, we're getting back to that, you know, okay. You know, like as long as we try to make her inefficient, wasn't quite as inefficient as we wanted, but you know, it's creeping, creeping that direction um, in order to have success. It was, it was Aaliyah that her efficiency tonight was a difference maker. Hey coach. And uh, just two quick questions. First question, uh, when it comes to Rakia tonight, you know, they made it really tough for her. What do you think they did to kind of take her away and what things can she uh, learn from a game like tonight? And then the second question will be, you've been coaching, you know, women's basketball for quite some time now. When it comes to a Caitlin Clark, just what do you think makes her so special? And have you seen, ever seen a player that was kind of similar to what she does? Um, I will first say that 
you know, the, the great thing, and I grabbed Rakia briefly after the game tonight, she's earned this attention. She's earned, um, you know, the asterisk in the scouting report that she's the go-to player, that she can really score the basketball. So there's super attention to her. And, you know, it's a huge credit, you know, like Caitlin gets that as a rookie. Rakia now gets that as a rookie. There's very few that get the asterisk that they're the go-to player. Um, and, you know, they're the centerpiece and center of attention for scouting reports. So these are all learning lessons for Rakia. And I told her, like, it is as frustrating as it is, is, is in the moment that she feels like there's no spacing and that they're, everybody's, you know, coming at her and, and showing her lots of congestion and lots of bodies. She's earned that right. So first, take it as a compliment and then learn from it. Like, how, how can she make it easier on herself? And, you know, I thought they were giving her a lot of attention and maybe she could share it and maybe her shot attempts would creep down tonight. I mean, she got 11 shots in 23 minutes. If she creeps back up to the... Uh, 28, 30, 32, 35 minutes that we've been playing her lately, you know, like, is that a night where she gets 16 shot attempts, but her attention on her, could she have found a couple easier baskets for us while she still hunts and we still try to get her the ball and get her the touches that we need to uh, get her, but she'll learn so much from tonight and what she's going to see the last seven games. She is going to see this kind of attention. She's earned it. She is a rising star in this league. And uh, these these are the kind of games she has to go through and, and learn how to play through because of the attention she's earned. That's the great news. She's earned all this. Thank you, Kurt. And I forget what the second question was. Oh, the second question is, when it comes to Caitlin Clark, oh. just to see the type of player that she is, um, with you coaching, you know, women's basketball for so long, have you seen any player that you can kind of compare her game to? And what what special things does she do that kind of stands out that maybe for us with the ordinary eye can't see that you coaches who've been in the game a while can see? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to say anything that you, you haven't heard. I mean, she is elite and she is one special player. Uh, things that stand out to me that have been around the game for 35 years, she plays with great pace. Uh, she plays with a great tempo first. Uh, she is an elite passer. She is an elite passer. She see, sees things before they develop. Um, and uh, she can really read. Uh, things. That's why for us to turn her over seven times and maybe have some other passes that um, might have been uh, turnovers attributed to a, a bad catch or so, you know, was impressive for us tonight because she is an elite passer of the basketball. So uh, that's what makes her special. Everyone talks about the logo threes. Um, you know, to me, what that does is she got incredible range. But it just opens up the floor for everybody else. That logo range opens up the floor. And so you always, always have to be guarding her and you always have to be giving her attention. Uh, she's really special. Uh, I don't have a lot of comps. I, I have different breakdowns of people within her game, but she has it all. Uh, you know, when Sue Bird was in her prime, Sue Bird played with incredible pace. Like one of the things that probably didn't get talked about enough is how fast Sue Bird was when she was in her prime. Um, you know, I got to coach Becky Hammond uh, when, you know, she was in college and Becky Hammond had such a unique ability to put the ball in the basket. Uh, it just like when she got open and got any kind of space, you just counted it. You know, like she just was not going to miss um, a lot of open shots. Now, um, Becky didn't play necessarily with the pace that Caitlin, but she, you know, had the unique ability to create space and get shots off and make shots, uh, played with change of pace. Um, so I see, you know, elements of Caitlin that I got to witness firsthand with the opportunity to coach Becky Ham in her career. Other things, you know, just continue to, you know, other people like Caitlin's got great size, um, you know, like she's going to just grow at the defensive end as her career goes on because she's got length and size and, and she'll just become better and better at that end. So uh, she's a special player and we're, we are really, really fortunate to have her in our league. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks.